Hey there, today we are going to be doing some practice with Zentangles. We have been learning about Zentangles, that they are patterns um, that you repeat and they can be relaxing or Zen. And then the whole point of the Zentangles is not just to have them be patterns, but to have them look like they're tangled and they're 3D and they're all mixed up. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few different techniques um, on this sheet that you can try with Zentangles. Um, if you don't have this sheet, you could just make your own squares. That's no big deal. Um, so make sure you write your name um, and then you're gonna need three materials when you're Zentangling. You don't want just one thing when you're Zentangling. To make these patterns look 3D, um, using multiple materials is the best way to do that. So you will have a pencil, a uh, skinny sharpie or pen and then uh, a little bit thicker sharpie so most of the time zentangles are black and white if you wanted to use color you could totally do that too um, another thing about zentangles is that in whatever you're making for a zentangle artwork a lot of times it will be broken up um, the parts of your artwork will be broken up um, and different ways to break up your artwork one way is wavy so making just a curvy line to break up part of your artwork. So you'll start with your pencil and you're just gonna break up each of your squares. The next one is curved. So just making kind of like a half circle shape. Closed would mean that you have a full shape like that. So it's closed off. So kind of a loop that we're making there. A more open shape would be something like this. And then a bouncing shape would go from one spot to the other spot. So see how it kind of bounces in and out. And then this one's going to stay open. So whenever you're Zen tangling, be thinking about how you can break up your space. One part of your square will be full of patterns and then the other part will be open. Um, that's one thing you want to keep in mind when you're making a final artwork is that you don't have to Zen tangle the whole thing. It's good to have some spaces that are just white without a pattern or some spaces that you fill in with black completely too. That will make some contrast. All right, so we're gonna start in our first square um, with our wavy line and we're gonna be repeating shapes. This is a great um, simple way to start out Zen tangling. Um, and when you're practicing with me, don't feel like if you want to do a, I'm gonna do a triangle for my shape. If there's a different kind of shape you wanna try out, maybe you wanna do a heart or a rectangle or a square or a diamond, um, you don't have to do the exact same thing that I do. Just be listening to how I'm using the materials um, and try that out, okay? And you're always welcome to try new things. So I'm actually gonna start with my thicker Sharpie here um, and make a couple of larger triangles. in my one space. Then I'm going to go on with my smaller Sharpie and make some smaller triangles to kind of fill in the space now. Um, some of these will be different types of triangles. Some will be small, some will be big. And this is kind of like a puzzle where I'm just trying to figure out where more um, of my shape can fit in and go together. Now, Zentangle, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So if you feel like you make a mistake or you your triangle doesn't look like a tri triangle, that's no big deal. Um, there are different ways that you can make it work. If you don't like the way a triangle looks, you could um, fill it in with black and make it bigger. Um, you could draw another design on top of it. There's so many different things that you can do. Okay, so now I've kind of filled my space with triangles. The next thing I'm going to do for my third material is my pencil. To give this some dimension, I'm gonna go in between my triangles and just take the side of my pencil and fill it in. Um, so I talked a little bit about contrast when there's open spaces. Um, one way to make your shape that you're repeating pop out is by having a contrasting color behind it. So that's what I'm doing with my pencil. I'm just carefully going around my shapes um, with my pencil. Um, in other practices, we will do some things where we do some shadings on the inside of shapes that we're drawing. But this one, we're gonna make these triangles kind of pop out. So I'm just carefully filling in between. And 
And if you wanted to, you could kind of make some darker shading on around the outside of some of the bigger triangles if you wanted to really kind of make some of them pop out more than others. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do with my skinny Sharpie is I'm just gonna take and make little notches in the corners of my bigger triangles. This will kind of give it, again, a little bit more dimension. Now you could go and do this on every corner of every triangle, um, but I'm just gonna do it um, in the bigger ones. And if there's some that kind of, if you overlapped with uh, the pencil and you wanna go back over them again, or you wanna make your outlines a little bit thicker, you could do that too, because that's gonna start to make it kind of pop off the paper and look 3D. Now, looking on to square two, we are going to do something called an aura. This time I'm gonna make a circle shape. I'm gonna use my thicker Sharpie to repeat this circle shape and then also fill it in. When I think of an aura, I think of something that um, repeats around itself. So like the sun shining is an aura. Um, so what I'm going to do is repeat the shape around it. Now I'm using my skinny Sharpie to repeat this aura. Now, when my circles start to get close to each other, instead of them just running into each other, notice how they're connecting. Those two circles are making an eight. So I'm making my circle go around the aura, but I'm being mindful of the other circles around it too. So once my hand gets out of the way, you'll see how um, instead of just having the circles overlap or bump into each other, the shapes are starting to um, connect and everything will come together. Um, you could do this in a completely different way. It's totally up to you how you finish your auras, but an aura is just starting with a shape and then outlining around it. Now what I'm gonna do last is I'm gonna take my pencil and shade in every other um, line around these auras. This is going to start to make things pop out and add contrast. So whenever there's a change in value that you can do with your pencil, that will make it contrast and make things pop out. You could do this differently by putting a pattern in every other line. It's totally up to you how you finish your aura. For our third Zen tangle called juxtaposition, I'm gonna choose this shape and draw it a few times with my thicker Sharpie going different directions. Juxtaposition means that you are putting one thing next to another thing that is very different. So now, with my very geometric um, rectangles, I'm taking my skinny Sharpie and making wavy lines behind them to show that they're overlapping. Overlapping sometimes can seem confusing, but all you have to do is when you run into something, you just stop, pick up, and go around it once you get to the other side of that shape. So I'm having this very wavy line behind these very straight rectangles. That's what juxtaposition is all about. Um, then finally, I'm just gonna add a little shadow on the sides of each of the rectangles to make them look like they are popping off of the paper, um, off of those wavy lines. So you kind of think of a light source and decide which side of the rectangle should be shaded. This fourth zangle, we're, Zen tangle, we're going to do a lot of overlapping. So I'm just going to do two parallel lines going across my space. Then I'm going to draw two parallel lines in a different direction and make it look like they're going behind my first set of lines. So as soon as I get to my first set of lines, I stop, pick up my marker, and go behind it. Once my hand gets out of the way, you'll see that. So I did that a couple times, and then I'm gonna do it one more time at the bottom. So I'm going to have these lines going behind each other. Kind of looks like roads um, passing by each other. Now I kind of went out of the lines when I did this, so I'm gonna kind of just trace back around um, my outline and make this look a little bit neater. That's one nice thing you can do with Zen Tangles is if you go out of the space um, that you are working in, you can kind of just outline it. Now I'm taking my thicker Sharpie and um, coloring the space in between my lines in. Now this is gonna make them really look like they're standing out. If you get to a spot 
where your thick Sharpie isn't um, able to reach, then you can take that skinny Sharpie and use that to fill it in too. So I like to fill in with a lot of black space because I think um, that's a good contrast um, when I am Zen tangling. So notice how I have all these lines, I have the black space behind them, but now it's part of craftsmanship is making all of these lines look nice and neat. So notice how I'm going back into those corners and making it look nice and neat. So it looks like the two lines are going behind the other ones. My last step will be to do a little bit of shading um, using my pencil. So I'm going to just shade underneath the top line to show that it's leaving a shadow on my bottom line. Um, so the darker I do this, the more it's going to um, make it stand out. The, the bigger my shadow, it's also going to show that it's further above the other one. So see how I'm layering the pencil to make it a little bit darker, start to make them pop off the paper. Remember, with Zentangle, we want these things to look 3D. Our fifth Zentangle is going to be a branch pattern. So I'm kind of doing a teardrop shape and repeating and overlapping in the space that I have. Because it's a branch, you can even go out of the space if you would like to. Um, notice how they're not all perfect, and I'm using my skinny Sharpie for this one. Now, because I didn't, I kind of overlapped lines and different things like that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and re-outline them, make the lines a little bit thicker, make them look a little bit nicer. So one of my biggest tips for zentangling is if your um, patterns don't look neat, to go back and re-outline them until they do look neat. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Then I'm going to start to add patterns inside each of the shapes. So you can add any pattern you want. If you kind of wanted to make it look leafy, that's what I end up doing. Um, the biggest thing with these Zentangle patterns is that you're keeping it simple. So I'm just making little lines and then kind of branching them off inside each of those teardrop or leafy looking shapes. Um, so you're not just doing one shape. You're doing a shape with a pattern and then you're filling things in with black or filling in the space in between like I'm doing now um, and then you're also using a pencil to get a little bit of extra shading so at the bases of each of these I'm adding a little pencil shading and a fun trick you can do is use your finger to kind of blend that pencil out too and that again is going to make them look 3D and like they are tangled. For your last one, try something new, look around at a pattern, and remember these steps. To use all three materials on every Zentangle, break up the space with a line, and fill in some empty space with black, or remember to leave some things white. Then you're repeating shapes a lot of times with your thicker Sharpie, adding a pattern or detail behind them with your skinny Sharpie, and then shading things in with a pencil to make them look like they are popping off the paper. Good luck with your Zentangle practice.